Hey, what's up guys, it's Technical Tim here, and I wanna thank everyone so much who's been liking all my videos and subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it if you uh, like this video or if subscribed if you haven't already. But uh, last video was the Gustafson Smith one. I told you I was going on vacation. It's now Monday the 31st. It's Memorial Day if you're American. And um, I, yeah, I was at the Grand Canyon. That was really cool. So I had a sweet vacation. It was good to kind of get my mind off MMA for a few days. And um, yeah, I had a really good time. If you haven't been to the Grand Canyon, I'd really appreciate, or I really, uh, I really um, suggest it. It was really cool. So I just want to let you know, this video is, um, I'm just giving you a little intro. This video is actually a podcast that Gugabe and I do. Uh, Gugabe is a really good capper and we just kind of talk about the fights from a general sense like we might give away we'll kind of like give away what we're feeling but it is we usually do this kind of early to midweek on each card and a lot of people have been asking for it so we decided to put it on YouTube and just put it here and I'll probably get it on iTunes and SoundCloud within the next week so I just wanted to let you know um, I'll put it on a playlist as well on, on this channel, so I'll, I'll just call it like Podcast with Gugabe. I think we're still kind of coming up with a name. Um, but uh, I'll put it on a playlist so you have all those, and these will come out pretty much every week. So it's kind of just each fight from a general standpoint. We'll get more technical on fights that one of us have action on or ones we agree with or that we disagree with each other on as well. And um, so, yeah, but do know... Sometimes it's early in the week and I haven't taped all the fights. Like there's a couple I hadn't taped going into this podcast. And sometimes I just haven't fully thought about all the fights because it tends to be earlier in the week. So my videos and my final thoughts video at the end of the week are the ones that were kind of like more official, I would say. And um, with Gugabe, I know it's kind of earlier in the week for him too. So you could buy his picks. He actually um, sells his picks as well. And he's a good player. So I recommend you buying him. But uh yeah, so just wanted to point that out. And as far as kind of, so it, this video is coming out on Monday, the 31st, or what is it, the 20th? I think I fucked up the date earlier. Sorry, guys. It's the 27th. I might have said 31st earlier, but it's the 27th. And the Sweden card's in like five days, I believe, on Saturday. So I'm going to send this video out today. And the only action I currently have on this card is Avenger and I got her a really good line early, and I tipped it early, so if you do buy my picks, do know that I have Avenger at minus 170. I just want to let you know, and I got it early in the week. The line changed big time, more than I even thought it would, so I wanted to point that out, and I have a few, and you'll hear me talk about it in this podcast as well. I have a few more eyes on, on a few different plays, but I probably won't have a ton of action on this card, but I do expect to have a few more plays. And, um, yeah, so listen to this podcast and I'll send out more specific fight previews for fights as I kind of finalize my thoughts on them. And I'll send out a final thoughts video as well. So just wanted to let you know kind of what the schedule was for the rest of the week. And I hope you guys enjoy the podcast. The first half of it, the first like 25 minutes, I believe we talk about the what the Kevin Lee card, just a quick recap. And if you don't want to hear that, just skip up to about the 25 minute mark. And that's when we start talking about Stockholm. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, comment below and we'll, uh, I think the sound quality is pretty good. So um, we're like working on that, but from a production standpoint, we'll, we'll get it better and have it higher quality for you all. So I hope you enjoy it and expect more video previews throughout the week. I'll put this, all the podcasts with Gugabe into that playlist, like I said. So enjoy. Thanks, guys. All right. Wake it. Welcome to w WMA All Day, Every Day, Full Pay. It's uh, me, Gugabe, with Tactical Tim. Saram is still recovering from the cupping. As you um, would all know, the um, RDA's win has done a lot to um, embolden both his health and his spiritual, spiritual, spirituality there. <laughs> So we're having a brief chat about RDA Lee results, and then we're on to Gustafsson versus Smith, and the um, light heavyweight mess that is that card. So, how do we feel about um, RDA versus Lee, Tim? Um, yeah, this was probably my worst, like worst pick of the year. I would say I I originally was on RDA even when I was talking with you, and then I just went small on Lee. Um, 
I kind of thought RDA would settle more up against the cage and it would give kind of Lee some moments to rest, but RDA didn't really do that. And I think I just kind of miscalibrated because I was comparing it like Usman and, you know, like Covington's success doing that. So I, I think I just kind of fucked up there, but RDA looked good. I mean, yeah, I, I felt like I got it pretty much right. Seven minute pivot point. Um, yeah. yeah. Lee just doesn't have the cardio to do what Covington or Usman did. End of the day, Covington had to go to war to do it. It wasn't yeah. like Covington just pushed him yeah. up against the cage and he was fine. Covington had to go to fucking war. And I was like, Lee is not going to go to war. It's, it's not what Lee does. Yeah, that's pretty much where I fucked up. It was like that. I think because Usman, it's like you kind of need to just throw out Usman's on another yeah. planet with doing what he does. But I think Covington, like Covington's fucking legit at, at using that kind of pressure wrestling game plan. And. <laughs> And it was still close, so he and he did have to go to war, like you said. So yeah, g- good good call by you, misread by me. All right, so starting at the bottom, Ars versus Arosa. I actually kind of missed this fight, so I have no strong opinions about it. I feel like Arosa was a bit more live than his uh, odds portrayed, and from my understanding, it was a fairly it was a clear fight, but it was still a fairly competitive fight. So I think plus five hundred was a bit stupid. But, yeah, it was it was kind of competitive early, but um, but then after that, like I mean, Arce was pretty much fucking him up towards the end. Yeah. It was like it was kind of like whatever. I didn't really give a shit. Still, plus five hundred is a big call, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, plus five hundred. I expect to see like Shevchenko, Casuera sort of shit. I don't expect to see like a fairly competitive kickboxing match or light finish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Yes, yeah, so that happened. Uh, Cummings Giles. That was a uh, that was actually pretty fun. What it was. Was that coming spot? Oh, yeah. Um, that was fun. It, it kind of seemed... Uh, I wasn't paying attention too much to it. I mean, I watched it, but I, as far as like round scoring, I thought it was pretty competitive, and then yeah. Cummins just killed him, right? So. Yeah. Uh, Herman Cummins. I made decent amount of money on Herman KO. Um, yeah. I know. It felt pretty even. Then just Herman just landed that knee, and Cummins was gone. I, yeah. Um, Herman was definitely the value side, but I, was, I didn't like look at that and think like Herman would win. Hundred cents at the time or anything. It just looked like the kind of evenly matched slug fest till yeah, just Cummins died and like yeah, obviously Herman had durability edge. Yeah, it was uh I'm, I, I'm, mad, I'm, was... I'm kinda mad I didn't play Herman, easy to say in hindsight, but I was kinda like thinking if I was gonna play it, I'd play him. Um yep. I think I hit small on him TKO on track, like not not much. I threw like fifty bucks on it. But he'd yep. uh yeah, like, I mean, I think Cummins had a little bit of a, an opportunity to maybe, like, get on top, but yep. Cummins' top control isn't, like, crazy or anything, and Herman's not a bad, like, defensive wrestler, and he'll go to war, and Cummins will kind of just die in those situations, so, um, yeah, good read. Yeah, um, like, yeah, I, I don't know if the KO was, like, 100% shot, but yeah, Cummins no. was definitely, plus 200 was clearly value. Clearly, yeah. Um, Dawson Trezano, um... I don't know, I swore on Trezano. I, I just felt like Dawson just kind of, I'm not saying it fluked him out, but just like he got gift wrapped mount off a takedown, which he used to make his grappling game work. I just feel like some people are misreading into him having an elite um, submission game based on that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think if he, if he would have gotten a takedown in like a traditional sense where he didn't land in the mount, I don't think he has a good enough passing game from what I've seen to just like beat. And, and Trezano is pretty schooled on the floor and his get ups yeah. are pretty good. I, I don't think he would have just gotten to mount very easily and dominated from there. It's just he landed in it off a body lock in the middle of a yeah. cage. And it was like, 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 I think the only argument you can make for Dawson is that he, since he goes for so many takedowns, he has since he goes for like 15 a fight, he does have a chance for like one of those to end up him kind of landing in an advantageous position. I think that's the best argument you can make. But overall, like I think that was, I want to see that fight play out again. Cause I think Trezano was starting to kind of do what he needed to do. Yeah. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. Next, um, pay versus Roberts. I think Roberts just kind of short circuited to be honest. <laughs> he just guys were like, Hey, just weird, weird shit. Roberts and now gets way in and bang. <laughs> Good knockout, though. Yeah, that, that, I mean, it was fun to watch. Like, how... I mean, the thing is, when Pereira throws his straight right, I think it is, um, whatever his, his straight punch is, he, he tends to land that pretty consistently. And I feel like... But, but even his, like, flying crazy shit, he actually seems to land them, like, somewhat yeah. consistently for how low percentage they generally are. But, uh... 
Yeah, like I think Roberts was just kind of wide eyed and was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> and got killed. So, yeah, um, it was yeah. fun to watch. I put a little bit on track on Pay Ko Ko. I think he's probably going to be somewhere get fade up failing pretty soon, but oh well, he's seems fun. <laughs> like he's yeah, going yeah. to be stupidly juiced in his next fight, probably. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's gonna he's definitely going to get some fun knockouts, but he'll definitely like coupled in to like a seven fight stint in the UFC. He's definitely going to lose to some guys who will just take advantage of him having holes in other areas. I feel. A bit of a shock of all, Des Green fought a surprisingly low volume, closer than it should have been decision over Charles Jordan. Yeah, I, di- I didn't really catch all that fight. What kind of happened? I have no strong memory of it, but I definitely remember Green dropped round three, just not throwing many strikes yeah. for no particular reason because he is dead Green and that's what Des Green does. Yeah, I was kind of tuning in and out of that fight. Um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of how Desmond Green wins Life fights. Is too, <laughs> Life is too short to watch Des Green fights. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he, he did hit me KO against Ross Pearson, though, so I do, I do like him for that. But yeah, I, I hear you. Aspen, the WM May Usman versus um, Ciara Eubanks. Ciara yes. Eubanks once again proved prove that she is better essentially everywhere, technically, than Lad. That just frustrates yeah. me. It's just, she, you I just watch her and I'm just so underwhelmed because she sucks everywhere, but the athleticism. Yeah, you, uh, Lad's your nemesis, I feel. Um, One of them is just like. I understand that women's MMA is all you need, but still, like Eubanks is clearly a better striker, a better technical grappler. And actually, yeah. that was actually a fun fight for women's. It, it was a good fight. I like um, the third round was good. I, the scorecards were absolutely. Like, I personally thought like a draw or Aspen Lad twenty nine twenty seven were the only two acceptable scorecards. Yeah, so gr- I missed a green fight, and then I started catching the Lad fight in round two. There was like a thirty minute window where I yeah. got busy. And I didn't have action on these fights, but round one I didn't really see, so I, I can't say anything. I thought Lad ten aided her in round two, just yeah, being I objective. Agree. Like like that that was I a agree. pretty dominant round. And then round three I thought was kind of like close, where I think you uh, could go either way. Um, yeah. So that's what I, I also didn't have volume because I pulled it out on my phone. So I, I don't I'm, I don't think I'm the best judge for this, but from what I saw in round two, I thought that was a clear ten eight. Round three I thought was like yeah. close, but. Like again, I said draw or lad twenty nine twenty seven is how I'd score it. I just yeah. Eubanks had two very close um, other rounds. Yeah, like um, Eubanks essentially ended the um, first round in like TKO position, and yeah, round three, I, I felt Eubanks just clearly outstruck her. Yeah, it. Uh, I mean, the odds were off. Um, yeah. lad, lad definitely has a legitimate top game. I know you don't like her, but like Eubanks no, is pretty good, but. It's yeah. still, it's just a lot of it's just nailed by how strong she is. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, like, if you grade, if you grade, like, comparatively against other women's fighters, like, it's like, it's like a Roxanne Modafferi. Like, she's not that great of like a grappler, but compared yeah. to the rest of the division, she's actually pretty good. But and then if you compare like Lad to her, Lad's you know a better <laughs> grappler than her, um, in yeah. my opinion. Uh, I don't know about you though. I know you hate lads, <laughs> but. Like, I don't know. So, so I just, I just fade that for a second. Um, who, who are you comparing it to? I'm, I'm saying Roxanne Modafferi, essentially. I'm saying, like... Uh, I'd say Lad's definitely more better practical graph because she's yeah. a freak athlete for a woman, but I don't necessarily yeah. think in terms of, like, actual technical grappling. Yeah. Again, just having that athletic edge means you can smooth over so many holes. It's like my thing of Arm Usman. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you know, I've personally experienced being, being the fucking big, being the big dude who has got the athletic edges and grappling, and you can smooth over so much shit using it. Yeah, I mean, but you kind of have to take that into account when you yeah. Yeah, tap of course. her a little bit. But she, like, the way I see it is, like, she's going to win a lot of fights because she can take advantage of that top game um, sure, thing yeah. she has. And she is, at least, like, is walk forward and will throw punches, too. Um, but I do think, like... The new dancer like, moves her head. She's a product of the time of the division. I feel like in like five years, you're going to see like female fighters a lot better. Like if you just compare men's MMA like five years ago to now, how big the evolution was, like I feel like that style will get faded out at some point. Of but, course. Um, that, that's just the way I, I see it. But I think right now, like she's fine, but she'll definitely yeah. like lose to some people as well. But True. I still think, I um, yeah, I agree with that. I, I want to lad versus the area since I have essentially the same game. <laughs> Just be bigger than the other person. <laughs> what, lad versus who? 
Caitlin Vieira. Oh, Vieira. Yeah, she, she's I I think highly of her like grappling skills as far as from a defensive oh, standpoint. But, but like yeah. relative to the division. Um, yeah. I mean, Kat Zingano can kind of bully take down a lot of people, and she really couldn't even come close against Vieira. Um, no. I think that was like that was like over a year ago. I don't remember it totally, but I, I mean, she she just seems like a tough girl to take down and just yeah. dominate. That's what I'm saying. So Lad could fall into a tough fight there, but that would be also, fun. Fight. Also, think of us, lads. Pick fight you pick the noise, babe. People blind projecting improvements onto fighters because they're young. Lad has never fucking improved. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at the first fight, Eubanks has got young, a lot better than Lad. Yeah, she that did. Th- that first fight, Lad won more clearly. Um, yeah. Where this one, it looked like, like Lad never really seemed to be in trouble of like losing clear rounds in that first fight, and she didn't yeah. just like, dominate on the floor like she, or like I don't know, but like I just thought Eubanks did make the improvements, like you said. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Darby Hamosh versus Austin Hubbard. Um, this is one of those classic "fuck you, I refuse to finish" jiu-jitsu fight, jiu-jitsu fights. Yeah. Um, so- I I had Rama I, or I had this fight not going to the cards like I thought this was just going to be a clear like <laughs> like quick sub but he just like didn't grapple for the first four minutes and then he would get a takedown with not enough time to work I feel and then yeah, pretty much yeah I, I don't know like I, I feel like if he just would have wrestled early he probably could have get could have got the finish but this fight pissed me off um but yeah. I mean it is what it is shit happens. Yeah, uh, Oliveira versus Lentz. My last bit of Oliveira, Oliveira KO bet was nice. I was yeah. just like watching the Tabor fight. I was like, wait, he pretty much like, stopped Tabor standing. I mean, I feel like it's value. Yeah. <laughs> um, Lentz was uh, unable to win the trilogy fight with Oliveira, a very necessary matchup for the good division. Um, I think we can now sort out our pound for pound rankings now that Lentz has lost to Ol- Oliveira for the third time. Oliveira's really improved over the last oh, couple definitely. years. Yeah, like his, his striking is like even if you just can because I think Lentz is actually I still think Lentz is pretty tough. Like he's like yeah, a decent he's lightweight, tough. um, and he was clearly outmatched here. Like yeah, especially in the striking. But I uh I had fight starts round two, and I specifically didn't play the over because I thought like it's always kind of round two where Lentz will kind of. Yeah, slow Start down a little tired. bit. Yeah, so that, that's what I did. So I, I thought that was like a fine hit, even though there's some, there's always going to be like shaky moments if you have some type yeah. of over with Oliveira because he's so he, he dangerous could just at any time. Yeah, I think big thing for Oliveira is his confidence. To be honest, like when, he, when he's just on, I think lot, big part of yeah. Oliveira is always his confidence. When he is confident in himself, he can. He's a world baser. I I don't even when know he's if doubting it, himself, he he just goes to shit. Like I personally don't, I I don't measure confidence because I I just have no. I think it's just impossible no. to. But like I think something kind of that going hand in hand with what you're saying is, I feel like if you force a little bit of a brawl with him or like some adversity yeah. or if you hurt him, he can usually he'll usually just kind of wilt. But the yeah. one time he didn't really do that was against Tamer. Like Tamer, yeah. Tamer hit him hard. Like he dropped him. Um, yeah. That was the one time I thought he kind of. Yeah. I always thought of him as a front runner. I guess is what I'm saying. Um, sure. And against Tamer, he didn't really do that because, like, if you, if you just look at a lot of fights, he'll just kind of quit if you start if he can't just finish you right away, and then you start winning the fight. Yeah, I might agree with that. Um, on to Luke versus Krantz. Um, on it, Luke, he he just seems very defensively void. <laughs> yeah, like, um, he's obviously a terrific forward, you know, come forward offensive talent and all that. You know, he's very dangerous. I do wish he got that fucking sub and. Um, but still, yeah, the fact that Krantz, who's came off the regionals and three isn't even a good regional fighter, managed to almost like got back control and all got like a did you get like a body lock? Maybe definitely got back control. Um, yeah, sorry to the listeners and sorry to you because I usually m- don't miss a fight, but this was the other one. I think I just like it, ha- it ended too quickly. <laughs> you, didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't miss, you didn't miss too much, honestly. It was just like, yeah. um, Krantz took him out, took him down off the bat. Krantz got like good top control for three minutes, and then just Luke got up and KO'd him. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, and like Luke had, had, had a gift wrapped dart at the end, and I was screaming him to get it because I had Luke set up, but he refused to. That's fuck uh, That's was Krantz, was Krantz any any good or anything? No, yeah, just standard regional brawler yeah. sort of dude. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, I haven't lied. Yeah. He's, he's not on my list of prospects to watch straight for that. Put that yeah. way. I mean, that's a tough fight to get thrown in on, like, yeah, yeah of course. Right away. <laughs> like, because Luke will just march forward and kill you if you don't have, like, cardio ready. <laughs> yeah. All right. Felicia um, for Mega <laughs> Spencer versus Megan Anderson. <laughs> yeah. All right. Megan Anderson, what the fuck? I mean, come on. Felicia Spencer, if you did tape, was not that good at jiu-jitsu at any point in her career. She took like five rounds to finish just like zero zero soccer rooms. And then Megan Anderson makes it look like peak fucking BJ Penn, BJ Penn and before Megan had a baby. Yeah. Uh, did you have any action here? Uh, a bit on Megan Anderson KO and a bit on the ITD. The ITD oh, was fine. The ITD, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I stayed away. I... I thought about playing the ITD, but I think it got up to like minus 170 by the time I yeah. started like really hitting it um, or like thinking about hitting it. But it, uh, yeah, like I, I still don't understand. Like I get the Megan Anderson KO play like totally, yeah. but I don't understand people who were playing her money line. At, like it got up to like minus 220 and it's yeah. just like people were like, oh, Holly Holm is like like a legit grappler. I'm like, have you seen her against other people though? Like she can, she can clinch up against the cage, but yep. Misha Tate finished her and then pretty much 10 ate her. The only time she got her down. And I know like Tate isn't no. a terrible grappler, but she's not great. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. Like I, I thought, I, I thought the, it was binary. I mean, Megan Anderson yeah. could have very well KO'd her, but she's a really bad grappler. And yeah, I, I don't yeah. mean that disrespectfully. It's just she's super green there. Like she's not the fucking grapple. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. She she's like doesn't know how to shrimp. She doesn't know how to f- catch a, a hook when it comes in with her hand. Like she doesn't really know how to do anything. Um, yeah, I'm fairly sure Megan Anson's um, grappling coach is tied to her vasa. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I, I some people just I don't know. I, you, you grapple, I know. Sometimes yep. you get people who work really hard and yeah. they just don't be, could become good grapplers. Like I don't think it's because she's not trying. Like her, uh, I think yeah, James like, Krause is a pretty well schooled coach personally. Yeah, it's like Melvin yeah. Gillard. Like he had ten years and he just never fucking understood grappling. <laughs> yeah, and same for striking. Some people just don't strike. Yeah, it, um, that's kind of more an athleticism thing. I feel. I feel like. I don't know about with grappling. I don't know if it's just like yeah. a coordination thing. Like that yeah. certain type of athletic coordination just doesn't go hand in hand. Cause I, I would, I would wrestle with people who'd wrestled for 10 years and they were just not good. And, um, no matter yeah. how hard they were. So I, I don't know if it's that, or if she's just not, I'm sure she's training like that. That gym's full of decent scrappy grapplers, like Cummins, like, uh, Kraus. Yep. I, I don't know. Um, but uh-huh. anyone who can, even anyone who just like has subs on their record, scared if you're betting Megan, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Heinish versus ICJ. Um, yeah, fairly predictable for what it was. I was surprised ICJ's cardio flew out the window in five minutes because like, I didn't look like he was working that hard in the first. Like, he usually has to work hard in the first round to um, gas, but yeah, Heinish just kind of just kept him going and shoe face gassed. Yeah, I think Heinish was doing a lot of things to make make ACJ not be able to just float on top. Like he was kind of pushing yeah. down on the shoulders, using his yeah. feet to push down, uh, push against like the quads to get back up. And then yep. he was fighting hands. Like I, I, there was like a stand, a lot of standing position where, where ACJ in the first round was clasped behind Heinish. Right? I think I remember yeah. that. And that that can be tiring. Like if you don't do that often. So yep. Heinish fought smart though. Like he he came in ready to defend i thought um yeah. that first round but yeah I, I hit heinish after round one at like plus three something oh, something sure. ridiculous. yeah so oh, see, clock slipped the favorite that's good <laughs> what, what's so, that Devin clock slipped, slipped the favorite that's good oh wow uh, yeah that's about right anyway um yeah so on to rda vs lou um yeah. Um, yeah, I think we covered this briefly at start. Yeah, we, really we, just, I think we talked about it. Lee's yeah. got seven minutes ago of gas, and you know, <laughs> people really underestimate how difficult Covington defeating the RDA was. Like, RDA has lost yeah. to Ferguson, Khabib, Usman, and Covington by a decision in the last like decade, in the last like five years. Those yeah. are the four elite pressure fighters. Lee I think has it's never been one of those four. 
it, it just goes to show like RDA gets coupled in this like and it's funny because I'm kind of saying this in hindsight because I played a unit only, but I fucking it was just a dumb play. I, I fucking I yeah. feel like I knew that. Like sometimes I'm I'll miss a fight and I'm like whatever. This one I just should have played, but RDA gets coupled into like his Kryptonite's wrestlers. Yeah. But it's literally against Khabib and Usman, who are probably the two best <laughs> pressure grapplers in MMA. Yeah. And then and then Covington's really good too. And yeah. if you look at yeah, like Kevin Lee out wrestles like a lot of people, and it just goes to yeah. show like he couldn't do it against RDA. So it's just RDA kind of got mixed up against a lot of elite wrestlers, not just standard wrestlers. I feel no. like he can beat that game. I think. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. So on to UFC Stockholm, which changed our topology pages. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. I do not have to have strong opinions on a lot of these fights, to be honest. Me either. Um, uh, Joe, how, how, how Alvarez versus Danilo Bellawado. Um, stay, stay away from me. It's, it's too Alvarez, yeah. Alvarez is a guard player, and Bilawadi has some semblance of wrestling. Pretty much. Um, and it's regional talent, so the thing is, like, usually guard players, I fade them all day. But I, I like, I, I don't know, I feel like since Bellardo's kind of regional talent, he could easily get caught in a sub at the same time. Yeah. I'm not playing a, a, a guard puller who threw, like, eight strikes in his UFD, UFC debut. So um, that's the way I see it. Yeah, that's very fair. Um, Clark, for, Clark for Stozic. Um My big topic for this um, UFC event is going to be stop blind um, favoriting random light heavyweights off the regionals. And on that topic, Clark is a better athlete, is busier, probably has better better wrestling, I think has better striking, and yet for some reason until just now was underdog. What yeah. the fuck are you guys doing? I, I understand that light heavyweight is very depressing. The current talent we have is just awful. And nobody wants to see them, but they aren't. But stop making literally any warm body from outside the UFC a favorite against UFC's talent. It's stupid. Yeah, um, I, I'm taping this a little bit, so I I would have probably hit Clark pretty heavy uh, as a dog, like you yeah. did. Um, I, I'm I'm taping it. And I, I do think. Just from the wrestling standpoint, I do think Stosic is actually pretty good at defending. Like, like his hips are good whenever people yeah. shoot a double or something. Like, I, I don't think Clark is just going to easily out wrestle him. Um, right. And like, but I don't know. Like at the same time, Sto- Stosic is fighting regional level talent. And he didn't really look good in his debut against Kimball at all. I thought it was just kind yeah. of uh, random. Like, like yeah. he, he wasn't even landing strikes. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, like my wrestling, I, I don't think Clark will just dominate the wrestling. I don't, I don't think Stosich really will either. Um, yep. I think it's just going to be either Clark kind of outworking him with occasional takedowns and maybe clinching him up and kind of just out, um, out voluming him, outworking him. Or I think Stosich yep. could just kill him at some point because Clark is kind of unreliable and I feel like he could just run into something dumb. Um, yep. So th- that's my that's my breakdown. I, I I need to look at it a little more. I do think Clark should have probably been the favorite. So I think people are playing him intelligently here. Yeah, I agree. Like I'm not I'm not like I don't think Clark is anything incredible, but I think Clark is better athlete, better schooled. Stosic really disappointed me in his debut. He just did nothing and took him, and then just randomly got guard TKO. You know, guard TKO was not something is is a consistent uh, actionable outcome in the UFC in fucking 2019. <laughs> yeah, oh, pretty- I, I, oh, maybe it lied everyone. Maybe it lied everyone because lied everyone is stupid. But yeah, um, I'll I'll now like if the odds stay where they are, I probably won't have any action. Like I think Clark yeah. should probably be a slight favorite. Um, but yeah, that's that's the way I kind of see it. Like I'll I'll be watching yeah. it from a live perspective too. So yeah, I think I think it's okay at the moment. But like Clark plus one fifty was a great bonus. Oh yeah, plus plus one fifty was great. I, I I had I just hadn't taped in time, and um, yeah, I missed out. I got one really good line earlier or later that we'll talk about. Um, but I just kind of missed this one. So yeah, that's fair. It happens. Okay. Yep. Uh, what was next? Um, Bill Malecki versus um, <laughs> Duda Santana. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna go for a female Brazilian cowboy personally, just because I'm pro Brazilian cowboy. <laughs> um. Did you tape at all? Or? No. Uh, I, I've just been told that um, apparently um, that's essentially female, that's Brazilian cowboy sister or some shit, so I'm going to support Brazilian, the Brazilian cowboy brand, which I think is fair enough. 
She pretty much just throws hands and is super green. Has fought fought no one good. Hard to measure her. Uh, Maleki, kind of the same thing. She like she doesn't really do any like like Leah Letson. It was just kind of like her getting pushed up against the cage, and it was just a sloppy, unskilled fight. I think yep. Maleki has like some type of striking background, but. Yep. Um, I, I don't know. I, I would cap this at even because I don't see how you could really know who's going to win. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. And, and that's pretty much like I think that I do think like if you just wanted to play out of like principle, you probably would hit, hit whoever was the biggest underdog early, which is kind of what people seem to do. Um, yeah. But like, I, I just don't feel like betting a fight like this. Like, like it, it's just too uncertain. I feel. Fair enough. You are, um, as I say, mentally weak. <laughs> um, so, right, so let's just move on from whatever fuck that, that is um, Nick Hind versus Frank Camacho I feel like Camacho just kind of gets busier here I'm expecting a fairly yep. close decision or like a random knockout and I think Camacho should be busier and Camacho being dog originally was a better prize um, I, I, this, th- yeah yeah. Like it's a fairly simple fight to cap in my opinion just Camacho throws about twice the strikes and we're probably getting the decision and Pretty Hines, not like, it's not like Hines some elite like power guy or anything. So, like he's, he's got power, but he's not like you know he's not he's not deading fools. Yeah, I'm only gonna have a couple plays on this card. Like I'm passing on a lot, and yeah. I, I think I wish I would have got Camacho early because at plus one fifty or plus uh, what was it? He was plus one forty. I got, I got for plus like, one ten. I got plus one ten personally, but it just yeah. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I guess there wasn't huge opportunity. He opened at plus one forty. I wouldn't have been able to get any action on that because it's limited, yeah. and then he's kind of just been around the plus 105 to minus 105 range since, um, or plus 110. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'd, I'd I'd like minus 150. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just think, yeah, yeah the, the dynamic should be fairly clear. Yeah. I think he should be the fa- favorite. Like I was looking at it and, um, the only thing that it, he, he throws twice the strikes, he gets hit a lot, but he also fit, went against Jeff Neal and yeah. who's legit. And, yeah. Uh, who is he? Dober, like a much more improved Dober. Like I know Hein beat Dober in 2014, but Dober's yep. gotten a lot better. And yep. Yep. he throws about double the strikes. He throws like six or six, like six and a half strikes per minute. And yep. he's usually around the 100 to 150 range in a three round fight. Yep. And Hein is usually around 50. So it's like, yep. it's double. I know Camacho gets hit a lot, but Hein does too. And I, yep. Hein doesn't strike me as a guy, like you said, to just throw a lot of like, he doesn't fight to his opponent's output. I feel like, yeah. and Camacho will throw over a hundred, and I just don't think Hein can do that. I, I just don't think he's used to it, and I think yeah. the wrestling will mostly cancel out. I think Camacho is a little bit better of a judo player than Hein, but like not in a way that's gonna make a huge significance, and he'll just be busier pretty much. So yeah, yeah, great. Um, yeah, just Hein just seems like a fairly low volume, just meh, and we should say. I um yeah I'm expecting a close but clear uh, Camacho decision when Camacho just throws a lot more strikes. That's yeah, I think feeling. I think Camacho is going to take round one pretty clearly, and then I think the next two rounds will be kind of competitive where Camacho hopefully just edges one off being busier, and he'll take like a 29, 28, 30, 27 decision. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah. Like Hein just doesn't he just doesn't throw enough, and yeah. he won't be the aggressor. Camacho will be the one walking forward for the most part, and he'll kind of just be like get the crowd more into it and probably get the decision that way too. You so say Faber's got a fight booked? Who? For you are a Faber? Oh, uh, versus who? Nobody knows. For people yeah. just... <laughs> I wouldn't mind seeing me against that triangle dude. Because uh, I, I, I dislike that triangle dude. You have a triangle dude? Uh, name? Mexican name. Um, oh, um, Bermudez? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't like his game, so I think that'd be interesting. I'm like, yeah, Faber's always good fun. He's a great guy. I have a yeah. friend who trained at Team Alpha Male, and apparently it's great. I'm, unfortunately, I'm too big to go, but, you know, oh well. <laughs> there's, there's a, um, if you're more than this height, you can't ride, um, just pop up in front of um, Team Alpha Male, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're little guys, I feel. Like, they're all, yeah. they're all pretty small, so. Um, yeah, well, uh, Santos Ray, got any strong opinions? Um, I, this... This is one fight. I I think there's two fights I haven't taped yet. This is one of them. I mean, I know their games though. Uh, I don't think Ray is all that great at scoring consistently, but Santos is super old and yeah, he hasn't Ray sucks. Off. Ray um, sucks, but 
but Santos is 3,000 years old and hasn't fought in two millennia, so fuck yeah. it. Like, if I had to bet, I'd probably say, I'd probably take, like, a blind five bucks on her age just in case, but... Yeah. Um, I have, so like, to do. It, it's not, like, honestly, I haven't seen much, like, I, I know, I remember Santos a long time ago, he just hasn't fought for years, so I don't remember. He's yeah. just kind of like a, uh, like, what's his style? Like, I know he's, like, a, a decent striker with, like, a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu top game. Is that pretty much what he is? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. He's pretty good at it. Just, like, classic Novi and sort of stuff. He's not, That's like, a great Novi and sort of dude, but he's decent level. Yeah, um, he's got um, like legit wins on his record. It's yeah, just Kevin Lee, Tony Martin, Escudero. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, had a draw versus Norman Park. So yeah, I don't know. It's a. Uh, I'll take gonna, it. He's I'll gonna do it. that. Claudio Silva, three years off, come back and um, said you wedding for no apparent reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good times. Um, Evan Jelansberg. Surprised me how far the odds lines are pushing out for this. Um, have you taped? No, I, I understand Evan just probably, yeah, I should have the wrestling margin, the idea of the hour and this level yeah. and we've so, them both being kind of shit. That's all that matters really, but. It, it was a fight I didn't think I would have strong opinions on and I ta- it happened to just, I, I, I usually go after the wrestling type of yep. fights early when I tape and um, Avenger, I got her pretty heavy at like minus 170 early. So that was like one line I caught. So I'm kind of happy with that. Um, yeah. but I do think like the lines come to kind of where it should be. I do think it will go back down, but I would cap her winning this fight, like about 70 to 75% of the time. So I think yeah. the early line was off. Uh, Landsberg just, she can't get a sub. So like, you got to throw that out. She, I doubt oh, she's going to KO Avenger. <coughs> Women's in the she doesn't have much power. So she's got to win a decision where like her main thing is clinching you up and landing strikes from there. And that's just going to give Avenger like easy single legs, I feel and yep. easy trips up against the cage. Uh, she's stronger in the body lock position and Landsberg just isn't good when you put her on her back. Like yeah, Kanitskaya out grappled her pretty easily. And I think yep. Avenger is like a better position, positional wrestler by a lot over yeah, yep. uh, Kunitskaya. Sorry. So uh, I think, I think it's come to where it probably should be, but yeah, I think helps. there was early value on her. So, yeah, that's fair. Uh, I just, I, I just, I saw the price. I was just like, I'm not gonna. I'm, there's no way I'm playing Effinger. Not anymore. Yeah, no. at that price no. because she's just too fucking. You know, she's just too fucking old to trust her at that sort of um, price. They're both. They're both old. To be fair, oh, um, no, no. I, I'm yeah. surprised that Effinger and her, and, her, and Landsberg are the same age. They look. They look a lot different than age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Effinger is like the worst case scenario for 37, and Landsberg is like a decent 37. So, <laughs> yeah, and uh. Yeah, I, I think she'll just win by out wrestling. Um, yeah, but I, I think the line's kind of now just whatever and not worth really playing. So, yeah, women's MMA is good because like it should just come down to a pure grappling match because like like Landsberg's gonna knock her out, knock her out or anything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the way I see it. And, and even if she, even if like Landsberg does well, her win conditions like a close decision. So even if like yeah. Evander, if the fight kind of just plays out closer than we thought, Evander still might get the the decision. So it's like, oh. and then I think Evander's just gonna like dominate on the floor once she gets her there too so um but the next fight is a new a new fight it's originally fabinski was going to be going against sergey kanda i have no idea if i said that right but now it's kanda zico versus Achman. Yep. it's yep. it's pretty low level i taped it a little bit today um yep. your typical regional fight where yeah so um yeah i have very strong interest in this uh tamer versus jerry that's also a very uh regional <laughs> fight uh, Joe doesn't seem to check leg kicks, which is always a big like, red flag for yep. me, so no play. Yep. Um, and then Tamer gasses like more than anyone I've ever seen, so then yeah. that's also kind of tough too. So It's not so much the gas against it's the gassing cliff that I have the issue with. <laughs> it's like, I don't mind the guy slow, slowly sliding down, but when you, yeah. just, like, when you just hit, like, you just let out of gas and you just fall off a cliff, I'm concerned. It's like Mickey Gall versus Diego Sanchez, where it was like, he, I didn't even see signs of him slowing down, then all of a sudden he couldn't move. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, the leg kick was the key thing I saw, too. So I think yeah. that was uh, good for you to point out. Like, he just doesn't check them, and he got battered. And I, I feel like Tamer might have early success, but um, yeah, okay. could be a good live betting bet, a live betting fight. If Tamer's kind of just, like, owns round one, I wouldn't mind playing Joe because Tamer, I feel like, will just kind of gas later and could even get finished later. So is what it is. Um, Hachevik versus Kyogos. Uh, I thought Kyogos was a bit wide of the dog for a bit, but I don't know. It's just, 
I think people might overrate Hadjovic's gra- grappling game off that last win because, like, the guy he TKO'd just had no – nothing – polarizes. He had nothing off his back. Yeah. Um, oh, Gagos can actually wrestle-wrestle. Like, you know, Gagos stayed safe against Alvaro and points and that sort of stuff, which is a decent showing of, of some ability to jiu-jitsu. Like, he still got yeah. tapped, but, like, it's still, you know, get, Oliveira didn't, like, completely just destroy him. No. Um, didn't take this one, no both guys. Like, H- Hazovich, like, he should be the better striker here, right? And it's yeah. kind of just a matter of... Because yeah. Giagos is a decent wrestler, from what I remember. Yeah. I need to, like, brush up. Um, yeah. But, like I, like, I feel like Hazovich should probably be favored, but I, yeah. I just haven't taped, so you probably know more than me. And I just remember Giagos had that had the fucking issue against uh, who's last dude again? It was John Japanese Hirota because he gets fucking ultra hard. But I feel like Hirota does actually make you work. Yeah, like yeah, Hirota might not be great, but he's tough as fuck and he will make you work. I, does, don't, does, I think Hadjovic can do that. I like I, I'll tape it and figure it out. But does Demir like have any decent defensive wrestling like at all? Not, not- Great. I, I, I mean, Martin Held man, just kind of hold him down fairly easily. I think Alain, Alain Patrick kind of held him down from memory. Yeah. Patrick is pretty decent at like that type of game if he's going versus a, a non sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah. yeah Patrick, I, I, Patrick hit nine takedowns on them in 15 minutes and held it and held hit four takedowns in 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah. And just, what's his take down the fence? His take down the fence is 31%. So if Gagos is just willing to go for fucking double legs, I think he's got a decent shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll keep an eye out on it. It. Uh, I, I like, I, I just haven't, I, I just don't remember all of Demir's fights. Like I remember against Polo Reyes, he kind of, I didn't, he, he got like a, a sub yeah. with like offensive grappling. I remember. And uh, that was, it was, was fairly, it was fairly close. No, it was a take mount take care. But oh, he just kind it? of took him. He just took him down past the mount. It was just kind of like holy shit. Yeah. So he raises the like, grappling sucks. The path to it was through grappling, though, right? Like yeah, the finish. Yeah. Okay, that's what yeah, he was still. It was definitely beating Raz in the feet, but like then, like he took him down, and Hayes just had nothing. Yeah. <laughs> like that was. Just, it wasn't like it was like um, what's it called um the Megan Anson's fight. It was just like holy shit. It wasn't like holy shit. Hadjavik can grapple. It was like holy shit. Hayes is literally nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Nick Hine fight was just a slow. There was no takedown attempts. Hine yeah, I just kind of lost. Yeah, Hine just lost a volume fight. Um, volume the fight. Held fight. Held fight was one of the great meme KOs of all time because um, Hadjavik hit this insane um, intercepting there. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, and Patrick just kind of wrestle fucked them. Yeah. So I definitely um, think that I, I can say, definitely see how Galgus wins this fight. Yeah, like I, I got a bit on plus two hundreds because, but. Which I think was about the right price. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look at it. But uh, next fight, I know you have strong opinions on uh, Manua and how do oh, you Rakic or Rakic? Rakic. Uh, I, mean, Rakic. I would say strong opinions. I just think Rakic minus two hundred fifty is stupid. <laughs> yeah, like, I um... we've got one good. We've got one good performance from Rakic. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> and this is a massive step up and go a step up in competition. Yeah, I um. The thing is, like, like I'm, I'm not, I'm not playing yeah. uh, Rakic. I, the, the thing is, like, I feel like people are kind of being a little optimistic on like Manoba just being able to KO him because Clark yeah. landed a big shot. Because if you look at the way Clark did that, he kind of just, just used his, it, it, it was a burst. Yeah, it was like a yeah. distance. Like it was like a Tyron Woodley thing, where like that he wrestled his whole life, so he can cl- he can cover distance quicker than anyone else because he's just used to shooting a double leg, so he can do that yeah. same thing to land a punch. And Manawa doesn't really do that, so it's like I yeah, don't know. I, I, I thought that second knockdown definitely did show the um, vulnerability though, because the second knockdown was more of a just down the left hook. The first one was just Clark Leslie bum rushing off the off the off the um, start of the fight, which I felt yeah. I wasn't really a huge amount of to because if you bum rush somebody straight off, you got a decent shot. But like the yeah. second one was more of a stand left hook situation, right? And I just Rakic, I'm not sure. I'm not sold him as a defensive striker. Yeah, you know, he's been he's been hit by Clark. He's been hit by Bahoso. What's the first time um, Rakic? Like, he, yeah, he, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He won a close fight. His first fight was a close fight against a Brazilian mediocrity. Yeah. Um, um, it, yeah, the thing is, like, it's kind of like one of those things where I don't think Rak- uh, Rakic is like some crazy good technical kickboxer, yep. but he is super athletic. And, yep. um, at least he, he can, like, keep a pace. And I, 
Yep. I'm just worried that like if he uses his athleticism to eventually just land, which he easily could, Manawa's yep. chin is terrible and he'll probably just go down. And it's like, I don't think Manawa can really like. I don't know what you think. I don't think his chances of winning a decision are great here. But oh, sure, I agree. Um, I just, I just don't see how a cage is a massive favorite here. Yeah, I think there's enough doubt here. Like, yeah, and a cage is taking a massive step up. He's gone yeah. from like, remember, light heavyweight's only got like ten semi competent guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like um, guys like Ladette, the Brahoso, and Clark, and even Clark was yeah, Clark was kicking his ass until that very um creative breakfast yeah which uh, yeah, uh that, that was an ass pull up he, he I, but he, he was kind of getting his ass kicked by clark because clark was kind of just using like blitzes and pushing up versus you know what i mean like it was kind of yeah. a little bit of a different style i thought like i, sure. I i'm just i'm just saying i don't think that is something manuel will do like i think manuel just has to kind of like force like some exchanges and land which he could yeah. I um, I, I just kept this fifty fifty to be honest. I'm yeah. not, I'm not, I don't think Matt, I don't think Matter's locked or anything. I guess what I'm saying is like I think his KO line because his money line at plus one ninety and his KO line is probably going to be like in the plus three hundreds. I think that would be a better play. That's I guess that's what I'm saying. Plus two seven five for his ITD at the moment. So plus probably for plus three hundred for KO. Yeah, probably like plus three twenty or something. So it's like or like maybe even lower. But uh, yeah, that that's the way I see it. I yeah, um, that's fair. Okay, what well, do you think a fight doesn't go to decision as a parlay like, like minus two ninety? Uh, I kind of actually like. I think there's more value on a cage decision at this point, honestly. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, Manawa he's a bit chitty, but like, I, I think people are overselling it a little bit. Like again, Santos he got dropped a bunch of times, but he also kept coming. True. It, and it, yeah, yeah, Yarn hurt him, but Yarn didn't. Yeah, you know, Manawa is fairly hard to stop. He's definitely he's, he's easier to hurt, but you've got to really follow up. I'd, I'd say. And Santos is like, and, he's a guy who can like bully you in exchanges too. And um, I'm not going to like really dig into the O's to be a knockout because it's just like. <laughs> he caught him cold. And also, can we not dig the fire O's to be a with, with um, analysis? <laughs> that, yeah. that was just, that was just, that was peak me most of me. Yeah. Anyway, um, um, I'm going to get some time pressure. So, me and Carney versus Fishgold? Um, I, I think it's a pretty close fight. Um, I yeah, have, I think yeah I'd cap Mikani like minus one fifty. I feel like Fishgold gasses doesn't really have to it. Mikani can out wrestle him, and yeah, I I, I think Mikani has a decent advantage pretty much everywhere but grappling, or just yeah. everywhere but jiu jitsu. Like yeah, he's I mean, Mikani's better athlete, but the better wrestler, better striker. The main issue is that Mikani is retarded. <laughs> Fish, Fishgold can be kind of more enthusiastic from a striking standpoint. I think oh, true, not, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying he's like better, but he will like actually go for it. Like he'll throw offense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I do think Americani, like Fishgold, if you watch his fight and he, he's a cage warriors guy. And if you yeah. watch versus Mark Heron Webb, like he can be held down and Americani yeah. by far the best wrestler he's gone against. But so like that kind of worries me for Fishgold, but I like Amir Khani doesn't look great off his back either. And Fishgold's yeah, got like yeah. decent leg lacing ability um, to hold yeah, you down. Yeah. So I, like, I think, I think Amir Khani, it's another one. I, I miss lines this week. Like I yeah. fucked up. Um, I think as the underdog was a really good play. I think now yeah. it's kind of close to where it should be, but yeah. I wouldn't it's mind like, I wouldn't mind live betting Amir Khani though after round one. Cause I do think Fishgold will come out hard. Cause he just kind of yeah, seems yeah. to do that every yeah, Fishgold just had too much trouble on the grappling with Tamer for me to be like, yeah, he still has sub Tamer, but yeah, Tamer was just like, through pure enthusiasm, kind of reversing things. I was just like, this is kind of sloppy. Well, he he fell off from top position. Like, he just got too high on like getting his back and just fell off. Yeah. And if, if that happens versus Amir Khani, that could be like yeah. multiple minutes of top time for Amir Khani, because Amir Khani will just lay on you. <laughs> like, and just take the fight. To be honest, I'd actually take Jason Knight over Fishgold. Like uh, I, I find Jason Knight is kind of, like I understand that he's now lost a bunch, but I, I, I max bet Lamas against Jason Knight, and I bet I've consistently faded Jason Knight. But I feel like people have overreacted uh, to Jason Knight's decline. I still think G- Jason Knight could be like a decent low mid, low mid, low mid tier featherweight. He's decent. It's just he plays guard too much, so he can just oh, be of course, good. yeah, yeah. yeah that, I mean, good. and Amir Khan is just kind of. 
It's hilarious because Mirakani almost died in that first round. He got knocked down like three times, and then he just laid on top for two rounds and took the fight. <laughs> Like, um, if you, if somebody could plug Blah Muhammad's brain into being Mick Hardy for this fight, I'd, I'd max him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, Blah he's an idiot. Yeah. Um, I like how so many fighters. If you just gave Blah Muhammad this guy's body, I think we'd be um we'd be okay. But as a Mick Hardy's piloting it, we can't trust that shit. Yeah, I feel you. Uh, uh, next one, Latifi Ozdemir. Uh, Latifi via Latifi. Uh, I've heard people are overreacting a bit to the um, Ozdemir race fight. Yeah. I just. Uh, like, Ozdemir is not going to clinch Latifi. He's not going to take down Latifi. If Latifi ever gets on top of Ozdemir, Ozdemir will quit. Because Ozdemir is a quitter. Um, and. What, what, they're what both I over, oh, go on, sir. Uh, yeah, they're both quite. They both got fairly shit gas tanks, but again, I felt like Latifi's gas tank lasts. Latifi will gas quicker, but he'll keep doing things. Whilst those three will just quit. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I think a random KO could happen probably for either guy. So it's just kind of yeah. like, whatever. Um, and then yeah. from a round winning perspective, I think like Ozdemir could just be busier on the feet. Like, like I think that's just, like, you know, more enthusiastic. Yeah. I don't think, I think Latifi's gas tank is better personally. Yeah. Um, even though like Ozdemir might take, an early round or something. I do think Latifi can actually shoot like a good double leg and a good single leg late. Like he did it versus Volante. He did it versus yeah. uh, what was this other? What was uh, was it Tyson Pedro? Yeah. But uh, two things I wanted to point out on tape that I think maybe like you probably didn't catch on tape just because I don't know if you taped it this detail, but like Latifi, um, his like main takedown is push you up against a cage and either finish with a double or he'll switch to a single and he'll literally pick you up. It's almost like the DC thing where he'll have like a yeah. high crouch and pick you up. And that can work on that can work on Ostamir. Like I've seen it. Yeah. Like I've seen Cormier do it. And I don't think Cormier's like high single leg pickup is much better than Latifi's. I think they're comparable. Yeah. Like Cormier's yeah. a better overall wrestler. But uh a thing about Check the top game, the, the top game thing. So, Latifi so I, destroys Cormier ten out of ten times. Latifi would be a minus <laughs> one thousand against Cormier. Shut your mouth. <laughs> but, uh, Actually, I wish we saw Latifi Cormier. I'd be I'd be really down to see that. Yeah, I mean, because I don't think he could just Cormier couldn't just go to his like yeah, safety net wrestling. Yeah, Cormier couldn't just manhandle Latifi. <laughs> I just think that'd be a very satisfying fight to watch. Yeah. He would probably <laughs> just out busy him though, and then like eventually get him tired. But uh. I just have a strong love for Latifi. He just his existence <laughs> is great. Just look at him. <laughs> One thing about Ozdemir's ground game is uh, against Smith and Cormier. Mm -hmm. Like Cormier almost choked him out at the end of round one, and then he got finished in a crucifix. Is Ozdemir when he gets taken down, he gives up his back immediately, and Smith caught him with getting hooks in, <laughs> and rear naked choked him. Cormier did the same thing, and then the second time when Cormier got him down in round two, he got yep. a crucifix. And I've noticed that like Ozdemir can get that get up going, giving up his back and standing up. And Latifi doesn't really throw hooks in, so I am a little worried about Latifi yeah. being able to hold. But I don't know if Ozdemir will just die when he gets taken down, like or quit. Yeah. So I, you, you can look at it on tape, like you can look at those two yeah. things. But uh, a good example of Latifi trying to get hooks in is him versus Volante. So if you just yeah. want to watch that, I, I just wanted to give you the info. So it kind of made me think, like, um. Like, like if Latifi had, if Latifi could put hooks in, I'd probably max bet him. But because he yeah. doesn't put hooks in, I'm actually kind of worried. And I kind of think it's a little more, com it's more competitive than it should be. Because I just think like an easy grappling nuance thing that he could do is put hooks in and be better there and he'd win the fight. So I, I don't know. That's that's what I saw on tape. And I thought it was pretty obvious once I kind of pointed yeah. it out. So. I got Latifi plus 160, and I'm just holding, I'm just holding that because I'm pretty happy well, with it. That's, I'm talking about the current lines, though. Like, yeah. plus 160, I would play, no doubt. Yeah. On Latifi. Yeah. Um, right now, it's like about yeah, even yeah. money, I, I think, from what I'm seeing. On uh, the bounce back to plus 110, but yeah. A bounce back to like plus 105 ish. Okay. But yeah. Um, plus I, 160 I, I, is a no brainer bet. Absolutely yeah. no brainer. Um, yeah. Now it's pretty close. And I, yeah, so I don't know. Um, yeah, but, I, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Um, I just, I just don't have much confidence. Vulcan, like, I probably put a tiny bit on Latifi round three. Just I feel like the price, the fight yeah. people no, no. to read the cardio. That's a uh, really good. Like, bet. Yeah. Once I was to me, gases. He fucking gases. He's like, he just, 
some guys just yeah some guys just do not hold composure when they gas one thing about latifi too where i could see him getting getting the sub is he uh on on your way on get ups he'll he'll hop in that guillotine like he'll pop yeah. it in and yeah. Ozdemir quits like like he's really easy from a rear naked choke perspective to get around his neck and i'm assuming he probably is from a guillotine perspective too and yep. latifi when you work your way back up if you like kind of give up your back and stand up he'll go to the front headlock and go for that guillotine i could see that happening like I, round three sub would honestly that'd be hilarious if you if you played that and it hit again but uh yeah. it could seriously happen um just with that guillotine but i don't think he's like gonna get the rear naked choke he just doesn't seem like a a, a take your back rear naked choke type of guy which i wish he was because it would be an easy easy money because he's gonna yeah. get takedowns that the single leg's gonna work if the fight plays out yeah i agree with that um yeah, um, speaking of round three, um, submission, uh, round three finishes, um, I think um, Smith is going to destroy Gustafson. <laughs> Actually, he's not going to destroy. He's, he's going to just randomly. So he's going to be randomly tap him. It's going to be great. Uh, you actually think Smith is going to win? Uh, I, I just have to try to feel like Smith beats Gustafson. I'm not sure why. I just do. Um, well, other than know. like a hunch from like a scientific standpoint, like you think it, you think he I, can? Uh, hunch told me that Smith was going to tap fucking Gustafson in round three. <laughs> Smith is Smith always John Jones. Thing about hunches is they can sometimes be lucky. Even though I think that's that was a good bet with those to me. Smith almost finished John Jones. When? When he um got the decision to whether he can continue or not. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna talk about some like back take. I was like, I don't remember that. Oh yeah. Uh well Sonin almost got uh injury, like default because his toe fell off at the end of round one. Jones. So Smith and Sonin, two goats. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and Matt Hamill, like as we all know, Jones is only Jones's worst enemy is himself. Yeah, I mean, to this fight, just like using numbers and like non hunches, I think Gustafson should win fine. <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah, it's like, same. But I just I just have a weird feeling that Smith somehow pulls it out. Yeah, it's like it's like Smith needs a finish. So play his ITD line. If you, if people listening are like, I kind of made a video about this fight saying like Gustafson, I mean, he just can't lose rounds here. So it's like, why the fuck would you play Smith unless if you play him inside the distance? So, um, yeah. I'm, I'm just getting a lot bet Smith after round two ends. Like probably like plus 1200 and Smith will just fuck him up and I'll be like, Balance's returns to the universe. I know Gustafson. I just I've never felt very enthusiastic about Gustafson's game. Gustafson's game. I just think the wrestling. Like I think he's yeah. gonna get multiple yeah. rounds of top control because Smith is a pure like cannot get to his feet and he'll he'll um he'll lay in guard and he'll just turtle up and give you his back and not even try to get up from there. He'll just sit there. He's done it against Ozdemir. He's done it versus Jones. Um, yeah. Also, an important thing is Gus will feel happy to um, throw illegal knees because he sees Smith doesn't take disqualifications, so <laughs> if necessary, <laughs> Smith refuses to take, refuses to um, win by DQ. Yeah, I mean, so I that, would that... One, that would have been one of the great UFC moments that Smith had fucking quit had had accepted that DQ. Honestly, yeah, it's it's it could have been warranted too. I mean, <laughs> I mean. That was a pretty big knee. Oh yeah, that was a massive knee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If Smith had done that, no shame. It's like, yeah, so what? You disqualified John Jones. It's, it's very deserved. I'm not like talking shit on this fighter, but I'm just saying like fighters will do it, and like you don't, we don't know how hurt some fighters are. Like some fighters yeah. could be like Smith. Smith could have been totally fine, and it could have looked yeah. bad, or it could have not looked that bad, and he could have been concussed. Like we don't know. But uh, yeah. maybe Dalloway against the Lombard. Like I uh, remember when he just quit like after round one. Yeah, yeah, and, and that one, like he even broke his fall when he got hurt. No. CB, so yeah. I think CB kind of like, I mean, yeah. good on him. Like he he got he got the win money. So it's like, but uh, I feel like it's some like I don't know if C, if that would have been CB, he probably would have taken the W. I'm just saying, other fighters. Mate, probably. What do you expect from somebody who went to Arizona State? What's up? What do you expect from somebody who went to Arizona State? <laughs> yeah, I uh, I've met CB before actually. It um, but. Yeah, he was like an all. CB's not as bad. As, I don't know. I feel like people. Oh, I, I like C, I like CB. You know, yeah, his, his face was always a tragic issue, it's a tragic um, issue. But apart from that, he seemed like a decent guy. Tried hard. Yeah, he, he was. A, he was a super super nice guy when I met him, and like his wrestling's not bad. It's just he he kind of he's kind of a front runner. Like he'll quit. Yeah. 
And he had chin issues. Yeah, that too. But anyway, yeah, Cigar should just womp Smith, but I, I just blaze Smith around for you. <laughs> All right, so like your head says Gustafson easy, but your hunch says Smith is gonna fuck him up. So I got gotcha. you exactly. I just, I, I just, I, something about Gustafson is very hard for me to be enthusiastic about. I just like, I, and I just like Anthony Smith. He tries hard. I mean, Smith is tough, and I, I could see him like I. When I originally taped, I made a video pretty much yeah. saying fucked, and then I taped a little more, and I do think Smith is better at kind of landing big shots than I had originally yeah. thought. Um, yeah. But it's just, he's at so many disadvantages at the same time. Like, it's like you're yeah. relying on a finish because he's not going to win a decision. I mean, what's his, his, his decision line? I'm like, okay, the book's got it right. Uh, it's plus 1300 <laughs> for Smith to win my decision. And I think that's accurate. Like, I, <laughs> it was Man, plus Smith 10. Doesn't need, Smith plus, doesn't need a fucking decision. <laughs> Yeah, it was plus ten seventy five, uh, ten seventy five, and not Smith by decision was minus three thousand, and like people yeah. hit that, like people hit the <laughs> minus three thousand. So, um, that's a brave move. But so. <laughs> I mean, it probably hits, but you, that's just not enough reward. But you know, whatever. Minus three thousand is a bit much. Like I, I, I hit minus three thousand on the politics um, prop the other day, but that was because like it was a lock. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just. I feel like uh, Gustafson should win pretty fine. So it's like, yeah, I agree. He, uh, if, he get, if he gets finished, he gets finished, and it's just MMA. That's all it is. Yeah, pretty much. I guess it's just <laughs> Smith. For his, I, I just hope Smith continues maiming because I enjoy it. <laughs> he could. I mean, it's it's and Gustafson just seems like a bit of a quiz to me. I'm not sure why. He just does. <laughs> I don't think so. so. I don't think so. Like, I don't, that, it's just, if I should have guessed this, all right. In the last five years, he's had one impressive performance where I've been like, oh, fuck, Gus looks good in like five if, years. If you go through his fights, so, though, like, he's been finished twice, like, in, like, modern Gustafson, kind of. And it was yeah. like Anthony Johnson, where he took, like, massive shots for, like, a minute longer than he should have. <laughs> for yeah. he, like, and then uh, John Jones, that was just like John Jones got your back mount and then he kills you. I, I, I don't think he's a quitter. And like, if you look at um, his Daniel Cormier yes. fight was kind of a war. And then oh, yeah, true. the first I, I was, like, I was quite was big on him against Cormier, actually. I mean, he, was a, he was like plus 250 and I was like, why? That was, like, that was a close fight. I rewatched it. <laughs> it was, that. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I mean, honestly, he could have he could have KO DC definitely. Like, he dropped him. Like, if he, he, he just him. walked away, he would have won that fight. <laughs> It's one of those ones where he kind of like woke DC up again with the ground and pound. Yeah, um, he he also showed like like he, he can shoot those kind of just like random double legs yeah. pretty well. Like he took DC down like three times. I mean, he couldn't hold him, but he took him yeah. down like three times, which is kind of impressive. But yeah, um, I don't think so he's a quitter. Though. I'll, I'll defend Gus there. I don't think he's a. The Glover fight's the last I've really felt like impressed by um, Gus. I swear, I I guess. I think versus Jan, like he he showed like good takedowns and top control. Yeah, um sure. against against Manawa, like good game plan, like he pretty much stayed out of his range, which I think he'll kinda do here. And then it was five years ago. Yeah, true. It was, I agree. But I mean but he no, hasn't had that many, he hasn't had that many fights and some of I know. Them, one was Cormier and Jones, and those aren't really comparable to this matchup. Yeah. And then AJ what killed the fuck him. Are you talking about? <laughs> Smith has gotten closer to beating John Jones anybody since Shell Southern. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, like, Smith could have finished John Jones at will. <laughs> True. <laughs> Easy. Easy money. Um, exactly. I just wish that had happened, though. I just think that would be one of the great UFC moments. So just want Smith to just walk off and retire in the cage. <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, I guess I, I, know, I know you have to leave soon, but I guess just before we, so people listening, I think my like favorite plays of the event, I don't, I'm not going to have much. I hit Avenger early and then I'll probably play Camacho too, but I don't think I'm going to have much other than that. I don't know about you. At current prices, I'd probably say Camacho is my favorite, like existing one. Yeah. And Mick Arnie still, and Mick Arnie and Camacho are still both worth it in my opinion. Latifi. Yeah. yeah it, Latifi is still fringe playable, but eh. Uh, Clark, yeah. still fringe playable, but eh. Yeah, I got you. Um, Manu, I feel like from a pure value point of view, you kind of have to, but whatever. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I, I just I just don't see minus 250 confidence from Rakeach. I just don't see how you do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you. Um, 
overall, it's yeah. not like I, overall. I think it was just kind of it's kind of a card where like there are good lines early, and now but, it's like I don't see like a lot. But we'll talk about the Chicago Chicago card next week. But I think that card has a lot of really but, like I'll have a lot of that. Probably the most I'll have all year. Um, yeah. so but uh, cool. I know you got to go, but uh, yeah. thanks everyone listening. Thanks for your time, Gugabe. I'm gonna put this on my YouTube. Yeah. So it should be out there. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Uh, we'll tune in next week. Uh, thanks a lot. Yep. All right. Yep. Say, say, all right. Have a good one. See ya.